Liberty to prevail, sin strong holds it now oppose, shakes the trembling king of hell. Let of God your Saviour praise, he the door has opened wide, he has given the word of grace. Jesus, what is glorified? Jesus, mighty to redeem. He alone the work has wrought. Worthy is the work of him, him who spoke a world from naught. Saw you not the cloud of as a human hand, now it spreads along the skies, hangs all the thirsty land. Though the promise of a shower drops already from above, but the Lord will shortly pour all the spirit of his land. Let your light shine on. Yeah, yeah, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna put it on a stand, I won't give up the fight. I'm gonna stand for courage, I won't be discouraged. Gonna stand in the truth and that the truth is knowledge. I am blessed and blessed and blessed to have a love like this, like this, like this. Yes, I am a son of the king, I know that I'm accepted. Have a destiny and I won't be rejected. I want you to feel it, so that is why I say this. I let it out, spit these bars, making God famous. I'ma let it shine, little light of mine. Put the news on a stand and I won't let it hide. So you can come and ask and I will tell the truth. Cause my story stands before you and it's living proof. If he did it for me, then he'll do it for you. He's knocking on the door, so what you gonna do? This little light of light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. We'll testify and live my life. The grand design, I believe it. Yeah, you're the reason why. Now I see it, no longer faking, no longer confused. So I give you praise, cause I love what you do. Cause you give me something people don't understand. Yep, you know you make me wanna be a better man. So I'm gonna go out and talk to your people. Yes, 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 I'm gonna talk to your people. Give them the chance to get up and to hear the truth. And the truth is, you're the reason why I'm breathing. Cool. This little light, a light of mine. I'm gonna let it, let it shine. This little light, a light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, oh, let it shine. Do you wanna be sent to the nation? Are you gonna change your generation? Is it gonna be your motivation? All you gotta do is start a conversation. Do you wanna be sent to the nation? Are you gonna change your generation? Is it gonna be your motivation? All you gotta do is start a conversation.
that the world will see You live in me Shine From the inside out And that the world will see You live in me You know me And you love me You feel me So send me To shine From the inside out And that the world will see You live in me Good morning, it's good to see you. Welcome to worship here today. It's good to have you with us. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, the stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The truth we celebrate is this. Best of all, God is with us. And so we continue our worship with the hymn that echoes these words, which is 610 in Singing the Faith. Best of all, God is with us. God will hold and never fall. Keep that truth when storms are raging. God remains, though faith is frail. Best of all is God is with us. God will hold and never fail. Keep that truth when storms are raging. God remains, though faith. Best of all is God is with us, life goes on and needs our bed. God is strongest in our weakness, love renews, will not forget. Best of all is God is with us, hearts are challenged, strangely.
Let us pray. O oh God, you bear your people ever on your heart and mind. Watch over us in your protecting love, that strengthened by your grace and led continually by your Spirit, we may not miss the way for us but enter into your glory, made ready for all, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from Luke, chapter 11, verses 33 to 36. The Light of the Body No one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a bowl. Instead, he puts it on the lampstand, so that people may see the light as they come in. Your eyes are like a lamp for the body. When your eyes are sound, your whole body is full of light. But when your eyes are no good, your whole body will be in darkness. Make certain, then, that the light in you is not darkness. If your whole body is full of light, with no part of it in darkness, it will be bright all over, as when a lamp shines on you with its brightness. Amen. Thanks be to God. The reading is from 2 Corinthians, verses 5 to 10. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. The God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts, so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. This is the word of the Lord. I don't know if I dare mention this among such company, but as a child, I used to sing a song, the verses of which are mostly unrepeatable, but the chorus went, My eyes are dim, I cannot see. I drop my specs down the lavatory. I love the idea that without glasses our eyes are dim, not shining as brightly. I imagine the words of the song unwittingly draw on biblical imagery and are uh, not a comment on the mental state of the person. Although poor eyesight, like poor hearing, is often erroneously associated with reduced mental capacity, our readings use the understanding of sight as a way to convey perception, the recognition of truth. In my first circuit, the lighting in one of the chapels was commissioned by a retired local preacher, Sidney Shorter, who was well into his 90s. As his eyesight was failing, he thought improved lighting would enable him to see the preacher more clearly. Unfortunately, as brighter and brighter floodlights were brought in, still to no avail, Sidney's son, Alan, pointed out in a weary voice that no amount of bright light was going to compensate for his dad's failing eyesight. The fact was, Sidney didn't need artificial light to see the radiance of God's word. And I'm sure the theological implication of that 
did not pass him by. In our gospel reading, Jesus is reminding his listeners that if they want to live in the light, they have to be able to see the source of the light. But to do that is more than simply seeing Jesus the person, Jesus the preacher, Jesus the healer. To really see the light requires us also to see Jesus, the Son of God. Like an icon, Jesus is the face of God, radiating the glory of the Creator. The problem is that so many people are trying to see God with their eyes instead of with their hearts and their minds. They're, they're constantly looking for signs, constantly searching for that elusive something that will convince them. I remember from my childhood uh, an American TV animation of A Christmas Carol featuring a character called Mr. Magoo. He was a, an extremely short-sighted old man who, who moved through life narrowly avoiding disasters. The humour was that he, he, he bumbled and mumbled along, oblivious to the, the mayhem around him. I recall Mr. Magoo being an endearing figure. It was as if he was seeing the world in a different way, where the difficulties of those around him were due to as much to their lack of vision as much as his poor eyesight. The prophet Joel describes how the spirit will enable old men to dream dreams and young men to see visions. Perhaps dreams are visions that have grown older and wiser. wiser. Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, draws on the images of light and vision to encourage the young church. In life, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be perceptive to the love and grace of God, especially when we embark on something new. When we are called to leave the familiar and follow where the Spirit leads. Paul reminds us that if we are open to the Spirit of the Lord, we shall be transformed from one degree of glory to another. We shall reflect the glory of the God of love and the Prince of Peace in our daily lives. So that those around us will become aware, will perceive the light of life even if at the moment they cannot see the source. Let me finish with these words from Paul's letter. For it is God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. For a miracle The heart longs For a little bit of hope Oh come Oh come Emmanuel The child prays For peace on earth And she's calling out From a sea of hurt Oh come Oh come
thank you, Andy and Janet. Thank you for all that you have done for us and for being such excellent colleagues. Andy, whenever you arrived and stood beside myself and David at the circuit welcome service, you answered along with David and myself that you would hold before us the story of God's love and mercy. Above all, that you would hold before us the gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Andy, thank you. You have succeeded in doing that. You also were asked, will you hold before us God's call to holy living and be among us as one who awakens the careless and strengthens the faithful? You answered, Andy, I will. And you have succeeded in doing this. And we thank you and we thank God for his ministry here in you among us. And finally, you answered, will you hold before us God's commitment to human community, to our neighbourhoods and all who live within them and to the world that God has made? Again, Andy, you said that you would and you have. And we thank God for the breadth of your ministry within the church within our communities and in this world that God has given us. Go now with the blessing and thanks of the circuit. And we hear from others who wish to say their own thanks from across our circuit. Andrew and Janet, this is goodbye and it comes from a Cockfield Chapel from the members and the youth club and the Sunday school. We thank you for your ministry that we've shared over the last five years. We will miss you. Keep going forth with God and bless you both. Enjoy Scotland. Goodbye. In your time with us, you have always challenged us to be the best people we can in whatever circumstances we find ourselves, but always delivered in the most pleasant and encouraging way. We cannot say thank you to you, Andy, without including Janet, whom we've enjoyed sharing time with, be it at a service or with a tea towel in her hand. From Windmill, we wish you both all the very best in your future life. We at Hamstony have enjoyed having Andy and Janet to support us in all that we've done, which they have done in every way, coming to various different meetings and giving us their all. Thank you once again and may God bless you and have a real happy time up in Scotland. Bye for now. Andy, we thank you for your part in our Christian journey over the past five years. God certainly blessed us with a wonderful superintendent minister. You have guided us with your wisdom, experience and inspiration. We also thank you, Janet, for all your help and encouragement. When God sent Andy, he also sent you. May the God of love fill you both with joy and peace as you trust in him surrounded with hope and enthusiasm when you head north to take up your new appointment. Andy and Janet, my family and I send you our best wishes. It is exciting to move on to a new place, exciting and challenging. God will be with you. We pray that your new churches will be blessed as we were with your commitment, enthusiasm and presence. God bless. As circuit treasurer, my abiding memory of Andy will be he never ever chased me for his expenses. 
he left that task to his financial adviser, known to all as Janet. I would like to wish you both every happiness as you move into your new station in Scotland. May God's peace and blessing go with you both. Hello Andy and Janet. Thank you for being our minister and thank you for being our friends. We'll miss you. Love from Edwin and Joyce. Hi Andy and Janet from Newton Aircliffe Methodist Church. We just wanted to say thank you for your care, support and guidance over the last five years. We've had a number of challenges, not least the amalgamation of the two churches here on the town and then the closure of Burnhill Way buildings. You were always so calm, but decisive Andy, and that helped us see a way through the difficulties. We know that all of our members thoroughly enjoyed your services Andy with a helpful explanation of the context of Bible passages, and your sermons provided simple messages with stories from your own experiences, reminding us that we are all human with failings and frailties. We both value, on a personal level, the support you provided when we had difficult decisions to make about a number of church issues. You were always at great pains to remind us that we must consider the impact on us personally. So thank you. We will miss you both, but we wish you every happiness in your new home and job. So keep safe and stay well. And please stay in touch. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Janet. Thank you, Janet. We'll now share our prayers of intercession. Loving God, we come together to pray for the churches of the Bishop Auckland and Children's Circuit their congregations and their communities. The past few months have brought us confusion, uncertainty and fear. Because of this seemingly indiscriminate virus, so many aspects of our lives have changed. We haven't been able to meet together in our church buildings. We've missed our church families. The welcoming handshake, the joyful worship and loving fellowship that is such an important part of our lives. Lots of us have been locked down in our homes, separated from our loved ones, probably frustrated at being cooped up, perhaps dependent on others, and possibly lonely. Our normal lives may seem a thing of the past. As we pray to you, you we ask you to comfort members of our communities who are suffering as a result of the virus, those who are ill or recovering, those who are particularly vulnerable and their carers, those who have lost loved ones whose lives can never be the same again. In a few moments of silence, we bring to you the names of all those we know who are particularly in need of your love and compassion at this time. As we pray to you, we also have the opportunity to give thanks for all those employed in the healing and caring professions, for those who have continued to work throughout the pandemic, stacking the shelves, delivering our mail, cleaning our streets. We are so grateful to those offering pastoral care via phone or social media, for volunteers and fundraisers to ensure that charities and local initiatives can continue to support those in need within our communities. We also give thanks to our ministers and preachers for giving us so many opportunities to participate in online worship and reflection. Loving God, we look forward to the time when once again we are able to meet in person, worshipping and witnessing together in our churches, in and love. And as we all look to the future, we continue to put our trust in you, knowing that our fears will be calmed as you hold us in your loving arms, bringing us peace, strength, and hope. Amen. <coughs> Heavenly Father, in our prayers for the nation, we pray for the people affected by the pandemic. 
especially remembering those parts of the country where lockdown has been imposed again because of resurgence of the virus. We pray for those people whose normal family and work and leisure activities are disrupted because they have been unable to travel around the country. In our prayers for the bereaved, we remember those who have lost loved ones but feel they are unable to grieve properly because they have not attended a funeral. Let them feel your comforting arm around them and grant them peace. In our prayers for the Christian Church, we give thanks for the technology which has allowed many people to worship t together, even though they are far apart. And we pray for those who do not have the equipment needed or are unable to use it. Remind them that you are with them, even if their act of worship is in isolation. We give thanks for the many people working to bring help in the form of medical work, often putting their own lives at risk, and those delivering food and other essentials, and those whose work has kept our spirits up during this time. And we give th thanks for those working to find a vaccine to control the virus and hopefully bring an end to the pandemic. Give them strength and determination to carry on with their work, serving their neighbours in many different ways. Amen. Let us now pray for our world. Loving Father, we pray for your world, a world in such turmoil. We pray for the countries facing an intense struggle with the coronavirus, America, India and Brazil. We pray for the governments, health workers and all the families who are grieving there. We pray for our world and the climate concerns. Our world has shown what an effect our society has had on it. We now have clear seas and rivers, cleaner air. We give thanks for people speaking out. For Greta Thunberg, whose work has been acknowledged by a humanitarian award and who is to donate her prize to charitable projects that are combating the climate and ecological crisis. We pray for tensions between nations. The questions raised by the report into the Russian involvement in the UK. We pray for the tensions between China and other countries. We pray for the UK's next step into the world, moving into a post-Brexit era. We pray for all those in our government working towards securing trade deals. We pray for businesses working out how to move forward, not only with the economic effect of coronavirus, but moving into an unknown future. Loving Father, we offer up these prayers. Our Creator God, we put our concerns into your hands, knowing and trusting in your love and care. Amen. We now join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Spirit of God, whose name is the wind, gentle as is the dawn.
Thank you for joining us in this service. We finish with a couple of blessings. May the God of love stir up in us the gifts of his grace and sustain each of us in our discipleship and service as we go our separate ways we re remain together in your love.